In a world that can be challenging, and at times unpredictable, it's hard to find moments to focus on what you need. Join Stephanie James on The Spark as she guides you to use your inner flame to ignite your best life. As a best-selling author, psychotherapist, transformational life coach, and international show host, Stephanie is dedicated to helping you create a life that takes you, your goals, and your passions to the next level, so you can live a life that is fully lit up and fully alive. She believes that your life is meant to be a beautiful expression of the things that light you up. That by living your dreams, you give permission to others to do the same. Are you ready to feel alive and inspired to fuel your dreams and put a fire behind your desires? Let's ignite a spark in one another that will illuminate the world. The Spark with your host, Stephanie James, starts now. Welcome to The Spark. I'm your host, Stephanie James. Just wishing all of you just a wonderful, wonderful evening. So thankful that you've joined us here tonight. I've got a really special show for you. I have Ken D. Foster joining me. And Ken is a visionary business strategist, best-selling author, and syndicated radio host of Voices of Courage show. He has coached and men mentored thousands of CEOs, entrepreneurs, executives, and he happens to be my personal coach as well. And I feel so honored to work with this man, such a soulful and amazing human being. Welcome to the show, Ken. Well, thank you so much for having me here today, Stephanie. I'm looking forward to sharing hopefully some uh, wisdom and uh, courage and maybe uh, help the audience to understand some principles that will really take their business and life to the next level. Awesome. Oh, my gosh. I know that in, in the time that we've known each other, you've already done that for me and you have inspired me so much. You know, the, the thing that I'm always curious about, Ken, is how did you get here? You know, if you could share with the audience a little bit of what is your backstory? Because we work with these people that are amazing, you know, as you are a thought leader and someone who's a visionary in the world. And we often come from humble beginnings or different beginnings. I, I was wondering if yeah. you would be willing to share your story. Oh, of course. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I grew up in a suburb outside of Los Angeles and, uh, you know, early on in my life, I was very, you know, I, I seemed to be different than a lot of kids. I had a lot of courage. I'd take a lot of risks, uh, you know, uh, courage though, without uh, some wisdom is dangerous. <laughs> so I got myself into a few, a few challenging times as a kid but when I, uh, I, I went on to school, I went into uh, college and, and when I was in college, I had about seven units to go. And I, I was working at a waterbed store at the time. And I, and I thought about what was going on with the owner. And I thought, you know, I can do this. And so I decided to go borrow $10,000 from my dad. I opened up a chain of stores <laughs> and that's where I started my career. So my career has led me, uh, there's been a lot of ebb and flow in my career. I, um, after wa the waterbed business, I went into manufacturing for a while, went into real estate, had a child, decided, my wife and I decided I needed something more steady than just some of my entrepreneur <laughs> endeavors. So I became a stockbroker, a security principal, arbitrator for NASD. I was in that business for about 12 years at the top of that business. I had started from scratch, a organization within Bank of America. We did about $200 million in our first year of business. And shortly after that, I decided, you know, my entrepreneur, my entrepreneur uh, muscle was calling me. It was, you know, I just needed to get out of corporate, which I did. And I spent a couple of years going back to my roots. I started reading again and learning and, and just, I, I read over 500 books in five years. And I read books about the human spirit, what makes us tick, psychology, sociology, um, everything from Joseph Campbell to, uh, to, <clears throat> 
spiritual uh, uh, understanding uh, with uh, the Buddhism and I am movements and self-realization fellowship and, and uh, Catholicism and being reborn, all kinds of stuff came into my life. It was amazing. And ultimately what that led me though, was in a path to learn how to master the mind and learn how to master the emotions and as anybody has ever tried that knows, it's, it's a difficult task to do, but it's worth it. And, and it's uh, for me, I learned to meditate and uh, meditated maybe five, six years. And then I got some real understanding about some of the strategies that we could use not only in business, but in our meditations. And I went from meditating 10, 15 minutes a day, and I did that for maybe five years, to being able to meditate eight hours within a three-month period when I learned the techniques. And that took me into where we are today. Uh, I help people to see the unseeable and know the unknowable and do the impossible because I've done that myself. So I just help people, guide people into helping them look at their mind and being able to let go of the limitations, those beliefs that are keeping um, a person stuck, just like it was keeping me stuck, to be able to free ourselves to step into that brilliance, that power, that passion that's within us. I will say this from my own experience. All of us are brilliant stars. We're born with genius. But over time, we take on societal beliefs, we take on family beliefs, we take on uh, beliefs from our peers, and it, it's kind of like a rust on the soul. <laughs> and what, what happens is that a lot of times you wake up and you realize that you've got stop-start patterns, or you are in a place where you're making uh, uh, you're making money, but you're not happy, or you're in a place you're in the wrong relationship, or you're just not feeling good about yourself. You've lost your purpose. You've lost your drive. All of that is symptoms that there's rust over this uh, soul, this beautiful soul. So that's what I do, Steph. It was a long answer, and um, but that's that's what I'm up to. Well, and, and a great answer. I mean, I, I know that that is all such a passion for you. You know, it's, it's the difference between having a career and living your passion. Well, you know what? I feel so blessed at my season in my life because I do have passion. You know, I've written seven books, I've coached uh, thousands of individuals to help them to change their businesses, change their lives. Um, it's very fulfilling. And uh, it's not only fulfilling, it's very lucrative. <clears throat> so I have the best of both worlds. And I'm in a place in my life right now, as you know, we've been traveling for like three months. We've been seeing all the national parks. And, you know, I had this on my bucket list for many, many years and it's being fulfilled, but it's being fulfilled because I have the opportunity to not only uh, travel, but I get to do my Dharma, my work, my passion at the same time. So I'm skiing one day up in Mammoth and the next day I'm coaching some amazing individuals. The next day I'm in a national park. It's an interesting lifestyle. It's fun. And, you know, eventually I'll get back to my home in San Diego and, and just, Calm down, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that'll ever happen. But. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know about that, Ken. <laughs> and, and you know, how beautiful. I, I feel like that is so many people's dreams, mm -hmm. right? To be able, because part of what I hear from you, Ken, is that you live a life of freedom. You yeah. have a lot of inner freedom and how you experience the world and outer freedom to move about and enjoy this world. Well, I was thinking about that this morning and I knew you'd be, you know, interviewing, we did this interview and I thought to myself, you know, what, so what are the, what are the five keys to lasting change? And I thought, well, we've already talked about the first one. The first one is peace of mind. It's like setting the goal to master your mind. And for me, my path was meditation and learning how to be still and, you know, Einstein said, you know, all, all I want to know are the thoughts of God, the rest are details. 
uh, Leonardo da Vinci, one of the greatest inventors of the world of, you know, of all time. What did he say? He said, you know, stillness, or as he said, isolation is the price of greatness. And Paramahansa Yogananda, one of the greatest sages of our time, said stillness is the price of greatness. So, you know, the, there's success leaves clues, as we all know. These are masters. And I thought, you know, what's good enough for a master is definitely good enough for me. Let me follow that path. So the first step is learning how to master the mind, have mental uh, calmness, and be able to tune into what we call a super conscious mind. That's the uh, part of us that's past the subconscious and conscious mind into the super conscious, which is, as Einstein said, you know, it's the mind of God. It's the mind of the universe. And when we tap into that mind, all answers are possible. In fact, I wrote a book a while back, Stephanie, it was called Ask and You Will Succeed. A Thousand and One Ordinary Questions to Create Extraordinary Results. That was my first book, first bestseller. And I learned that asking the right questions, we can drive our uh, focus of our mind into getting answers that are seemingly impossible. And once you understand how to do that, though, it, you've taken off limit. You start to take off limitations of what you can do and you start to go out, and this is what I did. I set my goal to do things that nobody else has ever done, not just duplicate. I started, I was a good follower for a long time. But then it's, you know, after you follow, it's time to go do something different that you can contribute back to humanity. So that's first step. Second step is daily introspection acknowledging what is working, acknowledging what is not working, and then doing some action every day to improve it. I have a philosophy that's helped me become a triathlete. That's helped me to create all of the business success I've had, great marriage, great family. And it's, it's this, it's simple. It's making, uh, setting the intention to improve every day improve our business every day, improve our personal health every day, improve meditation, go a little deeper every day. Um, I'm not hundred percent perfect at it, but it is my goal. And I strive for that every day. So acknowledging what's working, what's not working, and then being able to strive to better yourself every day. Uh, the third piece that for, for me was always been release. We need to be on a daily basis. we got to get really good at forgiving ourselves, forgiving others, and releasing anything that might be sticking us in a place of feeling disempowered, feeling those emotions, those negative emotions. Um, as Stephanie, you know, you're a therapist. You know, there's a lot of research. We can get in and out of emotion in 90 seconds, right? Ah, but a lot ah. of us don't. And I, I was guilty of that for years. I would, I would get upset and I resent something and it'd stick with me for a week, a month, a year. And, you know, it was, it was painful, but I learned how to, to release. And I encourage everybody to do that. The, uh, the fourth step is, is that piece where when I wake up in the morning and I teach my clients this, wake up, I tell my mind, first of all, I go to gratitude. I'm just grateful for that. When I open my eyes, I'm grat gratitude. I start thinking about it. And then I think uh, that my, I, I get my mind to command. I'm awake, alert, and ready. I'm ready to go. And I pop out of bed. It's a great way to start the day. Some people start the day, right? In fact, I used to like, oh man, I don't want to get out of bed. This, oh no, I got all this stuff to do. Who wants to go to this job? You know, the way we start our day a lot of times is the way we end our day. Mm -hmm. So it's about renewing our, 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 our vitality, renewing ourselves every day. What's our purpose? What are we passionate about every single day? We're not always going to have good days. It's going to be tough. But guess what? You can start your day over any time, right? That's how I do it. So I renew, I renew on a consistent uh, basis. And then my goal is to evolve. Evolve what? will evolve consciousness. What I know is that intuition is the key 
to lasting success, lasting joy, lasting happiness. What's in intuition? What's that gut feeling, right? It's that gut that we have, we feel it in our body. And a lot of us just have a gut feeling, you know, but it's undeveloped. See, when intuition is developed, it becomes 100% accurate. So imagine picking your stocks with 100% accuracy. By the way, I learned to do that. And then there was another lesson that I needed to learn. It's called patience <laughs> and staying with it for the duration, right? Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, in, in, in this is in our business or on stock or what, when you buy a stock and you, if you like the company and, you know, the economy collapses, but you still like the company, why would you sell it, Right. You just, you know, it's long-term. It's the same thing with our businesses, same thing with our relationships. So many people are in and out of relationship, right? I tell people, listen, if you really want to, you really want to evolve yourself, get into a relationship and then get into the relationship and, and then make a long-term commitment or get married. And then if you really want to grow and evolve, get into business with your partner. Perfect. You'll grow. <laughs> anyway. That's the truth. I mean, that, yeah, exactly. We, we always talk about, you know, in my profession, that the more committed you are, the more intimate you are, yeah. then it, it's that old principle of love brings up anything unlike itself for the purpose of being healed. So it literally allows us to go into these deeper and deeper levels of healing. Well, it does. And it's whether you're in relationship or you're in a business or wherever you are, um, you know, if you're if you're daily committed to taking 100 percent responsibility for what's going on, 100 percent, you know, it's. Uh, we all have a dharma and, and, uh, and karma. <laughs> what's dharma and karma, right? Dharma is really what you meant to do. All right. It's that it's where you are, what's what's unfolding in your life. And karma is what we create uh, by either taking responsibility or not. So if we're if we're 100 percent responsible and things are changing for us, well, you're creating some good karma for yourself. But if you're in denial and if you're in a place where you uh, are in, in blame or shame or guilting others or you think it's not about you, then obviously you are going to create uh, some suffering and misery for yourself. Pain is a great motivator for for all of us. Right. Um, if you want to really grow, the way to do it is to feel the pain and make the change. We've got to feel it, feel it in our bodies, you know, and if we don't, then we're, we're subject to more suffering. And it's kind of like the way the universe works, right? We get a little tap. Hey, by the way, you're going the wrong way. Then pretty soon we get a little harder tap. You don't pay attention. Pretty soon you get a two by four over your head. Right. And if you're talking around health, right. And you're, you know, you're not paying attention to, you know, you're, you know, you're putting on some weight or, you know, your body's not functioning. Right. And, you know, next thing you know, you get a little illness. Right. And next thing, if you don't pay attention to that, next thing you know, you've got a cancer or something showing up in your body. So everything is here. Yeah. I'm going to do a podcast on my clubhouse next, next, uh, next uh, week on clubhouse. And uh, we're going to be talking about signs signs of the universe because <laughs> we're always be we're always given signs sometimes it's pain in the body sometimes it's a relationship that's really dysfunctional and yet we're thinking optimistically oh it's going to get better mm -hmm. but we have to go deeper than that we have to go deep into why am i attracting that and saying yes to that in my life and it's the same thing in our business if we have people in our business that, um, you know, they, they, maybe they're a great partner in the beginning, but now they're, you know, every time you meet that person, there's conflict, there's challenges. Um, you, you of course can change yourself, right. To a certain point, but at one point in time, maybe it's like, well, maybe I need to do something different. That's hard, right? I used to lose a pencil. <laughs> and I'd go into grief <laughs> if you want to be worried about it. Right. <laughs> so, but when we're letting go of sometimes our old beliefs or people or places or things, sometimes it, it feels disheartening and it feels like it's going to last forever. 
But that is the place where we evolve and we grow and we become the best version of ourselves. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know, there, there, there's so many things. Thank you for sharing that wisdom. Um, where can people connect with your clubhouse? When are your clubhouse? Oh, thanks for that, Stephanie. Um, they can just search uh, Ken D. Foster, or they can search for my clubhouse, which is Voices of Courage. It's the uh, same, same name as my radio show, which, uh, you know, as you mentioned, you know, we, uh, I'm a producer and a host of that, syndicated in about 185 countries right now. So, so amazing. And I want to really quickly, we've got to go to break, but we're going to be talking about this amazing book. It's The Courage to Change Everything, Daily Strategies, and Essential Wisdom to Awaken Your Inner Genius. Oh, I love so, that. I love to talk about that. Okay. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> so come on back and join us after this break. Welcome back to The Spark. I'm your host, Stephanie James, and I'm here with Ken D. Foster, who is an amazing visionary business strategist and coach, helping people truly to absolutely unfold the very best that life has to offer within themselves and also externally in their businesses and in their world. So happy to have you with us here, Ken. I want to talk about your book, the courage to change everything. And I know courage is such a big thing with you. And, and, and where did that come from? Where did this, you know, I, I'm yeah. hearing that in your mm -hmm. younger years, it took courage to be an entrepreneur at such a young age and mm -hmm. get the $10,000 for your own business. I mean, you've, you've kind of practiced this your whole life. Mm -hmm. But when you think well, about I was, courage, yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for that question. I like that question because it uh, makes me, uh, I, I introspect on that a lot on courage. And for me, courage is more than a word. And courage is more than running into a burning building or jumping off a bungee jumping or jumping out of an airplane or, yeah. Uh, you know, courage is really an energy. Courage is a force. It's a power within us. If I were to ask you right now, if you were courageous, what are the three most important action steps you'd take today? Your mind will immediately go into, well, I need to take this action and this action and this action. If I asked you again, if you were courageous, what is it you would give up or let go of your in your life? And if you, you know, you say, well, I'd, I'd like to give up um, getting upset. <laughs> That'd be a good one for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, then if you're committed to that on a daily basis, there's this power force within us. It is called courage. And we ask ourselves those questions continually to step into courage. So I think for a lot of people, they need to, we don't talk about courage a lot, but courage is the bridge between fear and failure and success and joy. It is a bridge. So when you step into it, if you're in a place where, <clears throat> let's say your, your relationship isn't working, and you say to yourself, all right, if I were courageous, what is it that I would need to shift within myself? What could I let go of? What could I embrace? What could I do within myself? If I had the courage to do that, how would my life be different? So I use courage to get to my vision. The vision is everything. <laughs> so the image that you have, first of all, let's just start with your own personal self-image. Most people are have a false self-image of themselves. And I, I mean, most people. At the core of all of us, after studying and meditating for decades, at the core of all of us, I know we are ever existing, ever conscious, and ever new bliss. That's at the core of us. 
There's joy, there's bliss, there's power, there's passion, there's love, there's connection inside of all of us. So if that be us, if that's who we are, which it is, then if you're identifying yourself as something else, you've missed the point. And once you can identify with that soulful image of yourself, then everything becomes possible for you to accomplish in this world. So that's step one is self-image. Step two is getting the vision of what is it that you really want to have in your life? What is that vision? What does it look like? Some people tell me, oh, I'm not good at visioning. Great. Okay. It's a muscle you got to build because we all have it. So it's, and if you need to build it, you, you set your intention, you set your goal. Within the next 30 days, every day, I'm going to start to use my mind to start to visualize, maybe write out on paper, maybe feel in my heart what my life, I want my life to look like. In what areas? In your relationships, in your business, in your financial life, in your career, in your um, travel life, in your fun life, right? Get a clear picture of what it is that you really want to have in your life. Then after you get that, the next step, and this is a step everybody did miss this, right? Is that take some time and write out 25 reasons why you're going to accomplish those things, right? Get clear with your why. And the next step is ask, what am I willing to give or give up to accomplish that? Most people don't ask that. What am I willing to give to really have this dream, this vision that I, that I have in my life? So there's some inner work that needs to happen. And then the next step is ask yourself the questions I asked you earlier. If I were courageous, what are the action steps I will take today? And if you were to do that every day for the next 30 days, I can guarantee your life will shift. Your business will shift as you step into that image of yourself as a complete success, a vibrant contributing member of society in greater ways, your life will get better and better and your business will get better and better and your finances get better and better. But, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people don't want to do the work, Stephanie. It does take work. It is difficult. We all have very busy lives. Some people are getting ill. Some people have family members that are ill. Some people are, you know, in financial situations that are tough. Some people have, you know, the dog just died. I mean, there's a lot of excuses why not to do this work. But if you do the work, your life gets better and better and you have more freedom and joy and happiness in your life. So ultimately, I think we all do the work <laughs> eventually because pain, if, you, if, you're not, if you're not paying attention, right, then it gets more painful. But when you say, wait a second, I can get ahead of this pain curve. I can start taking charge of my life. Life gets better and better. Yeah, yes. You know, I, I, I resonate so much with everything you're saying. And I love that question, Ken, if I were courageous today, you yeah. know, I, it, it's, it's definitely one of those things that I've done with clients when it's like, I ask them this woman in particularly, I write about it in my first book, actually, she gave me permission to write about her story where she had just gotten out of a marriage and wasn't feeling comfortable putting herself out there. You know, she, her, her thought was kind of like, well, who, you know, I'm probably not even very interesting. I haven't done this for 16 years. And I said, well, why don't you just try on courage? Like you were trying on an outfit. And so we did some of the visualization, her imagining what that would feel like bringing up memories from the past of when she was courageous. And then we just said, let's just set up this next weekend as a scientific experiment. There doesn't have to be any, you know, we don't have to put too much energy into whether this passes or fails. Let's go in with a hypothesis that people are going to be interested to meet me. If I start talking, I'm going to have people that want to talk with me. Well, sure enough, she goes to this party. She comes back the next weekend. And that's what we said. Just try on courage. Try it on. Try it on. Walk around in it. And she came back that next weekend and she was like, oh my goodness, at one point in the party, I'm in between a doorway standing there and these two men are like vying for my attention. And she was like, I got it. 
I got it. Yeah, you got to step into it. Well, listen, I wrote the book, The Courage to Change Everything, because, you know, that, that title itself, Change Everything. And people are like, I want to change everything. But here's what I found. When you change one thing, everything changes. When I was, um, oh, back in 1992, 93, I was 50 pounds overweight and um, you hadn't exercised in a long time. And uh, I really wanted to change, change my diet. I didn't know what to do. And a friend of mine said, well, just cut out one thing that you eating all the time. And I thought, that's kind of weird. Why, why would I do that? But I followed his advice because I, I, he was a mentor and I liked him. So I ended up cutting out red meat. Mm. As a result of that, my mind went crazy. What am I going to eat? Am I going to get enough protein? Am I going to die? Am I going to, you know, but I, I was committed to it. And what happened as a result, I changed everything. I changed how I changed how I, I, I went shopping. I, I read labels. I learned how to eat foods that I've never seen in my life before. I learned my taste buds actually changed. Um, the way that I felt about myself, about my body image changed, my, the weight fell off. Everything changed by one conscious decision. So when I wrote that book, The Courage to Change Everything, I thought, is, you know, is this something that would really benefit others? And then I thought to myself, how did I do that? And I remember I did it one day at a time. One day, it was hard, right? I mean, I've been a meat eater all my life. It was hard to do that. Yeah. But one day, every day. And then I thought to myself, well, you know, we don't need courage now and then. We need courage every day, maybe two, three times a day. So I wrote the book in a way that someone could read it 10, 15 minutes a day. Um, there's courageous quotes in there from some of the masters in the world. There is wisdom of the ages in that book. And then there are specific questions to help your mind go in the direction of your dreams. And that's how that book came about. Um, I rewrote that book three times. That book took me six years to write. Um, you know, and I say this books, we don't really write books, books, write us. <laughs> uh, we change, we become what's in that book. And so for those people that are listening to this right now, and you really know that there's some areas in your life that you would really like to change, but you don't know how I encourage you to pick that up. It is filled with the exact strategies and the exact wisdom that a person would need to really not only Let's say New Year's is coming, right? Not only set the New Year's resolution, but with that book, use it as a guide for 365 days to attain whatever those goals are that you want. Well, and I have to tell you, Ken, I don't know if I told you this before. I read your introduction twice because it just it, it just inspired me so much. Just the introduction alone. Oh, but yeah. you know, don't, isn't it true though? We all need to inspire each other. You know, I, I pick up books every day. I'm, I'm constantly reading my books or someone else's books because my mind is a dangerous place to be sometimes. Okay. And uh, you know, and when I get off track or when I start feeling disempowered, first thing I want to do is find courage and, and I want to find some inspiration and I want to reset my mind. When my daughter was uh, young, she would get upset and cry. Anybody have a daughter or, or a son that does that? They're, you know, when they're babies. Um, unconsciously, I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I didn't know the principles that I was doing, but I would pick them up. We would, you know, you pick up your child when crying. And for me, I would take my, my daughter and then I would go show her pictures around the house. And ultimately, within 20, 30, 40 seconds, um, she stopped crying. What's the principle behind that? Well, it's something we can all use, something I do all the time. We're changing our focus and you're changing your, um, your um, physiology. So I picked her up, I changed her physiology. Um, and I changed her focus. I put her around and I'd show her pictures, right? Well, we can do the same thing. 
We change your focus, change your physiology, how you're sitting, and all of a sudden your life gets better. For me, I had a practice for years that uh, when I felt disempowered, I'd go to the bathroom, I'd splash some water on my face. I'd say to myself, I'm resetting right now. And I'd walk out of the bathroom and I would reset. Change my focus, change my physiology, boom. So there's no reason that we shouldn't stay courageous and inspired every moment of the day, except for one. <laughs> and that is a lot of us, um, we're programmed with this, this, I don't know, you know, we might call it negative energy. We might call it disempowering or people damaged us or what, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, you've, you've taken on some negative beliefs. A negative belief is just a belief that disempowers you. It doesn't move you forward. And so if you really want to change those beliefs, um, first of all, they have to, you can change anything you acknowledge. Acknowledge it, you can change it. Once you change it, though, how do you change it? That's the question, okay? Well, you need to add in some wisdom. Um, usually, you know, somebody will give you a piece of wisdom, but then you have to own it. You have to, uh, you have to realize that piece of wisdom within you, which with the courage to change everything, the book, what I've done is repetition is the mother load of skill. So I put in those, 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 uh, the wisdom of the ages in that book, and you will get it over and over and over again so that you can start to reprogram that subconscious mind and fill it with truth, hope, courage, wisdom, understanding, passion, power on a consistent basis. How cool is that? <laughs> it's the coolest. <laughs> I mean, and, and it's so fantastic. And I have to say we're, we're, getting ready in just a minute to go to break. And, you know, Ken, the, the thing that's so fantastic that I just, one of the things I've loved about you since I've known you is your ability to just say, yeah, you know, we, we don't have to show up perfect every day. There's a difference, you know, and, and the fact that you're so wonderfully transparent and like, yeah, I struggle too. I have doubts or I have difficult times because I think, you know, we can get these illusions about people that, like you are so successful and thought leaders and visionaries and change makers. And we like their life is perfect. And I, I think it's super important that we dismantle that, that we all struggle. Yeah. And so it's important that all of us learn how to exercise those muscles where we do show up. And as, as you said, you know, we can start growing that muscle of courage. Well, you know, the, the only difference between me and anyone else that's struggling out there is I've made the effort. That's it. Yeah. I just, I've made the effort and I keep making the effort every single day. Um, you know, as you alluded to, you know, there is no such thing, by the way, as perfection. <laughs> yeah, that's an illusion. Um, but we strive for it. We strive for it to be the best. And, you know, the Navajo Indians, when they, make their head feathers and their drums and their clothing. They always put a notch in it to uh, signify that it is perfect. It is perfect with imperfection in it, right? Like us, we're perfect and we're imperfect at the same time. I think that striving per for perfection has to do with for me, because I did that for years, it was really just low self-esteem. It was trying to be something I wasn't. We might call it imposter syndrome today. Then that is a, a, a form of not really knowing who you are or what you're about. And um, I remember I was starting out my speaking career and I came across a guy, he had spoke on stage and I I walked up to him. His name was Neil Donald Walsh. And, uh, you know, he's a multi-million bookseller at the time. And um, I walked up to Neil and I, I, before I got to him, this guy's very intuitive, right? <laughs> he wrote books called Conversations with God. <laughs> and I walked up to him and before I asked the question, he says, you know, when I go on stage and a prop, uh, a picture falls down behind me or I trip going up the stairs. He says, I use it. I use it. It's part of my 
But it's part of the perfection of showing up. And I know there's somebody in the audience that will understand or get that message that life is okay the way it is. And we just use the imperfection, the prop, the, the picture falling down. We acknowledge it. We talk about it. We'll laugh about it. It was the exact message I needed to hear at the time because I was afraid to go on stage because something might happen that's out of my control. And I think a lot of times we go through life trying to control everything. But as an entrepreneur, we learn quickly that we will walking into the unknown is one of the gifts of being an entrepreneur. We, you know, we, we have a beautiful vision of our life, but nobody really knows how you're going to get there. You know, Somebody once told me, um, what was it? Uh, you know, if you want to see God laugh, make plans, right? Well, that doesn't mean we don't make plans, but it, it does mean in that imperfection piece that we allow it to be what it is, how it shows up. We adjust along the way. And as we adjust, life gets better and better. Such words of wisdom. We, we have to take a quick break, but we will be back talking more about Kendi Foster's amazing book, The Courage to Change Everything, and continuing just to absorb all of these amazing gifts that Ken has to share with us. So thank you so much, and we'll see you in just a moment. Welcome back to The Spark. I'm your host, Stephanie James. And I just want to thank you all so much for being a part of stephaniejames.world. I have just gotten some amazing messages. Thank you for going to the website and make sure that you're checking out the new classes. There's a new master class that's being offered right now. And you can find out all about that at stephaniejames.world backslash ignite dash your life. We've got some amazing offerings coming up and we'd love you to be a part of our community. So many fantastic life-giving things. And I have to say some fantastic strategies I've learned from our guest here today, Ken Foster. So Ken, welcome back to the show. Let's talk more about what, what, you know, I, I can only imagine, and I know it's such a cliche question. What inspired you to write this book? And I'm curious because you've had seven books come out. What, what made this one different for you? Cause I know like each one of us, we're evolving, we're growing in wisdom. What, and, and I hear you so well in the last segment when you were sharing, you know, the books write us like the divine comes through us. And like this information wants to be shared. What was on your heart as you were creating this? Well, before I get to that question, I do want to let people know you can get the book at courage to change.us, courage to change.us. Uh, my heart was wanting to help and serve my clients and my family. That was on my heart. I knew that a lot of clients would come to me and they would make a shift. And then the next week, we're talking the same thing or two weeks later. And I thought, how can I help those clients? How can I help those uh, serve in a way that would really help an individual set their goals, set their intention, but be able to hold that vibration, hold that energy, hold that intention. Okay. Until the next time that we, we coached. And I thought, well, I need to write this. I need to write this book and I need to make it daily. So we form a new daily habit of tuning in, going within ourselves. This book works really well after meditation. You meditate a few minutes and then you, add, you go, you read the book or it can, and, and then you ask the questions or flip it. If you can't get into meditation, read the book, get inspired. You're, it'll calm your mind. It'll, it'll, raise your vibration as you read this, this book. Um, wisdom tends to do that. Truth tends to do that for us, right? And all of us have seen a movie or read a book or moved, something's moved our heart. And all of a sudden we're in a different state of mind really quickly. That's what I wanted to do. And I believe I accomplished that for my clients. So when they read this book, like you said, wow, that, that 
the forward, just read the forward. It'll, it gets you, it, it shifts your thinking and you're like, Whoa, you know, and you're in a different state after you read that. And that state is called, <clears throat> uh, well, it's, it's, it's called creative. You're in your creative state. You move into creativity. Yeah. You move into that place where it's possible things become possible again. And a lot of times for me, um, I love writing, by the way, I love writing that because I get in that state and everything's possible. We're in, the, we're in that creative zone, but it's more than that because so many people just stop with the creative state. And they love being creative. I've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of uh, individuals that they really like playing in the creative state because it feels good. Gosh, you know, I'll do my art. I'll paint every day. <clears throat> well, that's great. But if you paint every day and you don't know how to sell your product or brand your product or put it in the marketplace, then what's going to happen? You'll be a great painter that nobody knows about. So we have to be able to not only be inspired, but take inspired actions on a consistent basis. That is what I believe I accomplished with that book. So that being with those questions, because I am helping you direct your mind into the areas that will help you to evolve and to grow and to become the best version of yourself. So that's, that's why I wrote it stuff. That's a you know, long story, but that's, that's why I wanted to serve in a greater way. No, oh, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I absolutely. I feel like that comes through in this book. And I just I really want to invite our audience to check this book out and they can get this again, Ken, on your website. Uh, they can get it at courage to change dot us courage to change dot us. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, yeah. and, and by, by the way, Stephanie, I, I, uh, I'm not sure it's still on that page, but, um, if you go there, there are some bonuses on that page. At one point I was giving away a, uh, a coaching session with me, um, that got a little overwhelming for a while, but, uh, <laughs> I think it's still there. So, and if it's not, if you're, you're resonating with me and you're feeling like this is something that you would, uh, you'd like to talk with me personally about maybe some, uh, challenges that you're having in your business or your personal life, um, go to my website, kendfoster.com, kendfoster.com. If you scroll down there, there is a form there that you can fill out to request a, uh, uh, some time with me. And, you know, at that time, what I do with clients uh, is I just see if we got a match. Uh, I guarantee you'll walk away um, with some insight, wisdom, and, way, and a direction of where to go with, uh, with your challenge. Um, and possibly we'll end up working together. It just depends. Well, and Ken, you know, it's so funny. You and I are in such alignment. I was literally just going to talk about just the experience of having you as a coach and really wanting to share that with people, you know, because it has, you have number one, um, helped expand my vision. You've definitely helped me step up into courage. And oftentimes I have to laugh and say, wow, you know, I'm on a growth edge right now that at times is uncomfy because I haven't allowed myself to stretch. I haven't just allowed myself to be in that bigger vision. And already, I mean, I feel like I'm waking up every day and just feeling more inspired, more in tune. I've got more energy. I'm more excited. And you're such a wonderful guide that's really helped bring so much of that into my life already. And we've only been together maybe a couple months. So I'm deeply grateful for that. Thank you. Well, I believe if you're going to coach another human being, you need to have a coach yourself. And I've had coaches uh, every step of the way in my life over the last 20 years. Okay. 26 years. Always had a coach. I've got a coach right now that is um, kicking my butt, right? <laughs> Getting me out of my comfort zone in, uh, in an area that, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm creating a TV show. So she's helping. She's been in the business, you know, for 20 plus years, one of the top producers in the world. And um, she is uh, really, you know, showing me what I don't know. 
And it's a good thing. You know, it's interesting with a coach because a coach, a really good coach who has a lot of experience like I, I do and you do, Stephanie, um, when we see, we can almost read people's minds, <laughs> if not read them. Yeah. And we'll call that individual on that in, in a way that will help them to see things they've never been able to see before about themselves. We all live in these comfort zones and, uh, you know, we all want to be comfortable. We want to be happy, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the best place for anybody because we need as souls to express the brilliance that's within us. Um, we are here to do that. We're here to evolve, to, to get back to our, our God self. <laughs> and, you know, as we do that, we, as you take off your limitations, sometimes it feels really uncomfortable. My coach challenged me last night and uh, about some team members. And I was like, oh, but they're my friends. I want them all. I want them around me, you know, but she's like, you know, is this the highest and best for you where you're going? And I had to really soul search and make some difficult decisions. So it's not always easy, but at, in, when we go into that place where we let go, I don't know about you, Stephanie, but when I'm letting go of things, sometimes it feels like I'm grieving, mm. <laughs> you know, but I've done it enough that I also know it's like the darkest hours before the storm, the dawn, right? We go through that dark night of the soul and then, you know, we rise up again, but we rise up in a different place. We rise up stronger uh, with more insight, with more courage, with more ability and power and passion to take whatever that business or life or whatever we're doing to the next level. It's uncanny. A lot of us don't want to feel the pain uh, of grief or letting go or admitting we're wrong <laughs> so that we can rise up into a new, new, new piece uh, of ourselves. So that's part of what you will get when you read this book, because <laughs> I will challenge your belief system. And when your belief system is challenged, you may go, Oh, I I'm not going to read that book anymore. Or the smart ones like, like us that we go, wow. Why am I reacting to that? Is there something I need to learn? Is there something I need to grow? Is it there, there's something I need to just let go of, you know, making the author wrong or the wisdom of the ages? And maybe I need to change. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and I and I love that piece of also our work together and and your perspective. You know, I've, I've described you, Ken, as, you know, yes, a business strategist and a coach and a spiritual master, because I feel like all those components of you are really what makes change. And I'm hearing you say that when you just said, like, to, to realize our God essence, that we really are powerful co-creators. And so we can step up into that and make not only substantial change in our own lives, but truly in the lives of others. And that's part of what this is all about. You know, I think one of my messages has always been your healing matters because you become then the ripple, you know, that's that, that pebble in the pond and the ripples of that healing radiate out to everyone around you. Yeah. So, so this is the essential work to get in touch with that God sense in us. It is the essential work and it's the, it's the work that brings you joy. It's the work that brings you that way. You know, we go back to where we started, it, you know, with fulfillment and a sense of uh, purpose. Um, you know, what I found over the years is that no matter how dark it got, there's always the dawn. There's always the next step. There's always the, the, the joy that's waiting for us 
when we get out of our out of our way there's a mythology and i'm going to kind of butcher this a little bit but i'll yeah do it the best i can so it was the goddess inanna and horus his uh, her husband and horus got chopped up into a whole bunch of pieces and taken down into the underworld and uh, inanna decided to go and find her husband and as she went down into the underworld and the underworld represents the subconscious mind in uh, greek mythology or in, in uh, so um he went down into the underworld and um met the god of the underworld and she said in anna says i, I want to take my husband back and the god of the underworld says well um you can but you have to give me something you have to give me something and isn't that true when we take our lives, when we start to go down into the underworld, into the subconscious mind, there's something there that we're holding on to. We think it's right. This is the only way it is. This is, uh, this is my, uh, my whole life is built around this identity or whatever it is. There's something down there that when we can loosen the reins, we can let it go. We rise back up to the surface. And as we do, all those little pieces that were scattered start to come back and we start to bring back that power that's within us to accomplish that, which we're made to accomplish. Stephanie, don't you think everybody's here? And this is my philosophy of life. I think we're all here. We all have purposes. We all have circumstances that are showing up in our lives. And a lot of times People are going, I don't like my circumstances. I don't like my life. I don't like where I am. <clears throat> That's where I was until I found this amazing prayer by a, a follower of Paramahansa Yogananda, Sister Gaina Mata. And the prayer was, God, don't change my circumstances. Change me. Say that prayer for a while. It's a scary chair. It's a prayer to say, to say because you're like, Oh, my circumstances are going to stay the same. Well, they are. They absolutely are until you change. Absolutely. What is it? As within, so without. Ancient proverb, right? As within, so without. We will always outpicture what is in our in our mind, what we hold on to, what we vision. You know what what is what is we are primarily thinking about on a consistent basis. We will outpicture that, and we can shift that really quickly when we set intention get clear that we're going to accomplish that intention no matter what no matter what no matter what the circumstances if it's in your heart that passion that to, to do something different if you hold on to that and you're patient and you're consistent and you do the work, whatever the work is, it'll show up for you. I guarantee you. <laughs> so Stephanie will show up in your life, right? If you need some therapy or you need some deep coaching, I'll show up in your life, but it'll show up. And all you have to do is say yes to it. And it's interesting, Stephanie. Sometimes people come to me and they say, well, I really want to work with you, Ken, but I don't have the money or I don't have the time or I don't have the, um, uh, you know, I've got a lot of projects going on right now. And, and yet within their soul, they've shown up in that space with me or with you. And they know somewhere deep inside, it is time to change. It is time to evolve. It is time to get out of their way. And those same circumstances that are showing up right now that stops them from working with us will show up a month from now, six months, mile, a year from now, 10 years from now, if they don't make the change. Sometimes it's like, all right, I'm committed. I'm going to let go of the projects, one project, just so I can make time for this. Or you know what? I'm going to get out of my way of thinking lack and limitations. I have no money. It's never going to show up in my life. And we allow that to dis dissipate for just a moment. The universe wor works and moves with providence. Your commitment will determine what shows up in your life. If you're hundred percent committed to working with me or with Stephanie, a hundred percent, no doubt you're going to do this. Then what's going to happen is things are going to open up for you to be able to step in to do that. It's going to happen. 
Um, I don't know how much time we have, but uh, we have about a minute left. Okay, so I'm going to just say that I'm ho- I pray that uh, what we've talked about today, you'll take to heart. You'll be able to re-listen to this podcast, pass it on to your friends, your family, those people that you know may need some guidance. And have them get the book, The Courage to Change Everything. Um, you know, if you're on the fence, you don't, you know, you're, you want to get out of the circumstances you're in, take action. Go to my website, kendfoster.com, sign up for a session with me, take action, go see Stephanie, do the inner work that you need. If you'll do that, life will get better and better. That's my promise. <laughs> and, and, and I have felt that promise already fulfilled. So, Ken D. Foster, thank you with all of my heart. It's always such a joy and just a privilege to share time and space with you. Thank you for sharing all these amazing messages with the listeners. Thanks for tuning in to The Spark with Stephanie James. Remember that you already have what you need to live a life that is fully lit and fully alive. You're already holding the flame. Now it's time to ignite your best life. Learn more at stephaniejames.world. That's stephaniejames.world. And tune in next week at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, only on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Shine on!